All right. We ready? Ten minutes. Yeah, we, I think we're ready. Take three. Take three. Ten mm -hmm. minutes. Okay. okay, sound check. <laughs> Done. Today. Okay, today. What's the day? Uh, today's topic is stuff we're seeing in social media. Trends we're seeing. Actually, one trend we're seeing in social media that kind of bugs us both, I think. Right? I, I, Do you want me to tell you what the trend is and then you can tell me if it bugs you? I'm, I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> so we have an admission already that you know what's going to bother you. In a lot of discussions, a lot of the forums we see, there's, you know, there's debate back and forth. And let's face it, it's, it's audio. It's what you hear. It's what you like. Nobody's right. But people, the people that tend to think that they are right are the ones that eventually come along and goes, well, if something measures this way, that has to be right. I'm not trying to be nice. I disagree. <laughs> okay. I completely disagree. I know you disagree. I only agree what you disagree. How's that? Oh, fair enough. Okay. So let's talk about a couple of the measurements that people generally talk about, and I mean they're the ones that they're the ones that are starting to get beaten to death because they've they've been around for fifty years. They've been around since the receiver wars of the late nineteen seventies. I mean the ones we're thinking about are watts per channel, total harmonic distortion, damping factor, frequency response. We we're not able to, able to cover all four in ten minutes. No, we, we well we're we're, we're gonna that. we're gonna do a really really simplistic one of, where I, I mean the first the first one is watts per channel. I mean, it's you're you're measuring one frequency at a single resistance with a pure sine wave, which tells you basically. It's pure sine wave in that one frequency in that particular resistance. Usually eight ohms. Yeah. Um, I suppose you can actually put a dummy dummy low like capacitor and uh, inducted it to simulate a speaker low, but it's still a single frequency. It's a really really narrow perspective on what an single, amplifier is doing. Single frequency, yeah. And then and then there are measurements that suppose supposed to have a full bandwidth power rating, but you're not putting all of the frequency at the same time. You're measuring one frequency at a time. No, um, and uh, all these measurements do the same thing. They take a minute snapshot, right? They take a really minute snapshot of a piece of information one, one at a time. Yeah, one at a time with, <laughs> with 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 like a fake signal going through because a sine wave is not gonna is nothing like a piano or a flute or an oboe or it's, a voice. It's a, it's a signal. Yeah. It's a sine wave. Yeah, but it's not music. No, it's not. We don't. We when we talk, we don't create sine waves. Even if you're trying to like. Ee! It's not sine wave. Yeah. So basically, all of these measurements, they're, they're tiny snippets. It's, it's essentially like you taking an egg out of the package in the fridge, measuring the diameter of the egg and going, that egg's going to taste good, without any thought towards how long the egg has been in the fridge, <laughs> what chicken laid it, how you're going to cook it, who's going to cook it, and, and what you're going to do with it after. Like It's, just, it's, like, it's the stupid, smallest, narrowest piece of information you can find. Uh-oh. How long has that been there? Oh, it's still working. We oh. have sound check. Oh, good. But I, I think I should hold it. All okay. right. So I don't knock it over? Yeah. All right. What's the next one we want to go on to? You want to talk about total harmonic distortion? Okay. And talk about why that's basically a facade? Mm, a facade. At least you can actually see a facade can uh, be nice. Okay. Yeah. So it's less than a facade. Yeah. It, it tells you... It basically tells you how not wrong an amp is, but doesn't tell you how right it is. Yeah. So if you have, what's the difference between a 0.05% distortion and a 0.005% distortion? It's not 10 times better. It's just not wrong. Not wrong, but not right either. There's, there's a history of amplifiers that don't measure well and sound great. There's a history of amplifiers that measure really well and sound like they really measure well. Let me put it that way. <laughs> okay, I, I can live with that statement. Yep. They, yeah. they measure really well. Sounds like they measure really well. Yep, and then if you're designing an amp to amplify not music, to amplify something else, yep. maybe that measurement really means something. But we are measuring an amp that's supposed to play music. We are not even close to able to simulate music from a signal generator. Well, here's an analogy that I, that I think 
works in this case a little bit. I mean, it, the, the the what we're measuring is so narrow that like let's let's look at something else for a second. Let's look at not amplifiers. Let's look at musical instruments. I can take a tuner that measures frequency. It just measures frequency. I can take a tuner and measure a trumpet playing a concert B flat. I can measure two trumpets playing a concert B flat, and that tuner can tell me that. Both instruments are playing a B-flat that's relatively close to, to the pitch, so they're close to being in tune. What the tuner can't tell me is if one trumpet player's got a great sound and the other trumpet player's got a not-so-great sound. Here's the other thing. I can take a trumpet, an oboe, a clarinet, a saxophone, a guitar, a piano. I can have them play the same pitch, and the tuner will tell me that they're playing a concert B-flat, but it won't tell me any information about the different instruments and we know those instruments sound differently we know they sound differently like I, I mean you know a trumpet a trumpet and a, and a clarinet do not sound the same or they shouldn't if the waveform is being reproduced correctly but the the measurements we have can't even come close to telling us any of that information at least not the ones we're using the current measurement yeah. in my opinion can only tell you the M is not wrong how not wrong is depends on how you want to interpret it and it doesn't tell you how right it doesn't tell you how it sounds it doesn't tell you how right it can tell you a piece of, equ piece of equipment is not wrong enough that you can go further to develop that 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 design yeah the other thing it can't tell you is whether or not you're going to like the sound of it no there's no way it's like trying to tell somebody oh you're gonna like how this pizza tastes um, well, you don't know no. until you put it in your mouth. Your own mouth. Yeah. Because all our, our, our brains works different. Assuming, even assuming the mechanics, the mechanics part of our ears are exactly the same. Our brains are all different. It's all. It depends on a lot of things. It depends on how we grown up, how our culture is, what we we have listened when we were young, what sound we grown up with. Are we are we grown up in the city? Are we grown up in a rural area? That's. The, the brain, how the brain is developed, how it perceives sounds. Yep. And how it paints that sonic picture for you when you're listening to stuff. Um, do we want to go on to frequency response? Frequency response to me is kind of goofy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's silly because it defines human ears as being 20, 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And, and that's the general range. But I mean... What happens outside those frequency ranges matters, correct? Yeah, I mean, yeah. what happened, okay, when, when, when I just saw a manufacturer publish a measurement, it's like 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz plus zero minus 0. 0, 0.5 dB. Uh, what does it tell? What does it tell you? How, it certainly it doesn't tell you how the amp sound. It tells you it's measured flat frequency response. Okay, let's assume it will have flat, flat frequency response coming out from the amps and flat frequency response coming out from the speaker, but we're assuming the speaker have flat frequency response to begin with. And they don't. Okay, never mind. Don't throw that monkey wrench in there. Take the wrench out. Go, go, go back to the frequency response on the amp and, okay, from 20 to 20 kilohertz, what happened with 19 hertz and what happened to 21 kilohertz? So, they don't tell you the phase angle of the frequency within the range of the frequency that they are publishing without the phase angle that specs means very little especially how it relates to the sound what we are trying to say is yes there are specs, there are published spec, but try very hard not to look at the spec and judge any piece of equipment because it doesn't tell you near enough to able to judge a piece of equipment yeah you're getting information without context and it's 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 it right you need context one piece of information is not enough you need a whole suite of measurements and then and then you need the basic knowledge at least the basic knowledge to understand how to interpret the instrument yep the more I learn, the more I know that I need to learn more. But if you think that you know it all, good for you. You're happier. And I'm not that happy. So I need to learn more. So here's, like, 
you know what? Let's show them. Let's show them the preamplifier. Let's show them the C three twelve, just as an example, and just as a setup for this, we've got a C three twelve out now. Stop me if you don't want me to continue. Okay. No, no, you continue. It's getting, it's getting, it's getting reviewed, and it has been measured independently by other people. Okay. Now the C three twelve preamplifier. If you've been watching the videos, it's got a set of gain stages on it. It's got warm gain stage, tube gain stage, solid state gain stage. Manipulating those controls makes it sound sonically different. It makes it clearly makes a difference to what you're listening to, what you're hearing. It it makes the music sound different. The whole point of it is to make the music sound different, so it suits different speakers and rooms. However, the manipulation, again, measured independently, the manipulation of those controls does not reveal a change in the frequency response. It does not reveal any kind of changes in any of the measurements. In any, the measurement suite they're using does not reveal any different changes. And that's, why the re, that's why one of the reasons why the review is taking so long, because they're trying to figure out why that is. Now, be fair for the measurement. Yeah. They are using the current measurement technology, or at least the measurement that they are willing to publish. Right. If we can hear the difference, we should able to measure the difference. But either we just don't know how, or we don't have that knowledge to know how to measure yeah, yet. We don't have the tools yet. And even if we able to measure something different, I don't believe that we, un we are totally understanding how to relate those differences to how we hear. Yeah, and that's, that's the biggest thing, right? I mean, the numbers tell you the smallest, smallest piece of information they can tell you without context. There's no way, there's no way of, of creating a relationship between the numbers that you're reading and the things that you're hearing in the amplifier. I mean, you you might think there's a correlation, but really, that's probably just coincidental. That would be my guess. Coincidental meaning like we hit and 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 just just we, lucky that we yeah. We actually oh, hit the I really like this amp. It's got a high damping factor, so therefore, high damping factor amplifiers are 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 the thing I need. Well, not necessarily. Well, if you think so, you're happier. Yeah, you're happier, but you're. <laughs> Uh, so that's why I'm not really happy all the time. Yeah. <laughs> the more I learn, the more I don't know. Yeah. So are we going to show the preamp? We can show the preamp quickly, yeah. Well, then you call the mic. Well, I'll hold the mic. i got to move the camera. You move the camera. I'll move the mic. I'll move myself. Here we are, going to the preamp. Okay, so the, uh, the, the, the image is going to shake a little bit and a little bit of noise because I take it off of the tripod. So I've got the mic. Here's the preamplifier we're talking about. Okay, down here. I've actually got it sort of set to a more warm type sound right now, but this is the that's the warm. That's the warm control. That's the tube control. There's the solid state control and of course master volume control. Okay. These are just selector switches over here. And you can you can manipulate this so that this sounds very solid state. Wait a minute. There we go. That would be a very solid state type of sound right there. And yeah, I'm using the master volume because what I found through experimentation is the master volume. What have I done? That's tube. That's solid state. There we go. There we are. Now we got solid state. Yeah, I know. Thank you for not correcting me, but I corrected myself. I'm self-correcting now. So I've actually found through experimentation that the solid state and the volume control kind of work together as a gain stage pair. So the the warm and the tube work together as a gain stage pair. These two work together. But here's a solid state sound. This sounds very different. It sounds very punchy. It sounds very detailed. Um, this setting, which is where I kind of prefer it with the speakers I have on now, which, were fine, which are fine F18 speakers, I think that speaker likes something just a little bit more tube-like, just a little bit softer around the top. But notice you hear these things, you will hear a softer edge around higher frequencies, but they don't measure like you're hearing a softer edge around fre higher frequencies. It doesn't measure that way. So, I mean, I think that's a pretty clear indication of a very different sound in, an in, a, in a preamplifier that's sending out the same measurements to the instrument suite that's, that's, being, that's taking account of what's going on in it. Okay? 
So there's a number of different ways you can set this thing. Um, you know, for the moment, this is kind of this is kind of something like that is kind of my working favorite. But that's going to sound very different. That's going to sound very different than than this. You know, which will sound very different from that. You know, there's just there's just a there's you know a lim It's only three knobs, but there's pretty much a limitless amount of manipulation you can make. So anyhow, there's a practical there's a practical uh, example of a, of an amplifier that you can manipulate to sound differently, and it won't measure differently. So. I think that's all we've got to talk about for the moment. Yeah, we passed 10 minutes already. We did pass 10 minutes. Well, you know what? People can hang around for another minute for this one. So, if you have any questions, this would be a good place to get answers. Business information for Angela Gilbert. And if you want to come and check some of this stuff out and see what it sounds like and, you know... I'm not asking you to bring your your instruments to measure my my preamplifier, but if you want to come and hear how it works, if you want to come and ask questions about some of the other stuff, come and see me. And excuse the uh, excuse the very neatly handwritten phone number, but I just changed my phone number because this one's way easier to remember, much 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 easier to remember. Hey, next time when you hold a business card, no. try not to put that your finger on that black spot. How's that? Oh, you always watched it. Oh, well. Okay, I'm turning off. Okay. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon, or hope you see us again soon, or something like that. Take care. Have a great day. Bye!